Well, hello everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm gonna to take you all on a tour of my entire Hoya collection. I've been recently doing a series here on my channel that I like to call House Plant Show and Tell, where I simply round up every single plant of one genus and share my entire collection of said genus with you guys in a video. And I really wanted to continue on with that series with all of my Hoya, but as it turns out, there's like 45 to 50 different varieties of Hoya that I have in my possession. So I figured instead of rounding up nearly 20% of my entire plant collection, I would alternatively take you guys on a tour around to all my Hoya. And I'm pretty sure I did a Hoya tour in my old home like two years ago, although I'm pretty sure I only had like 25 different varieties to share back then. So I think there's a lot more for you guys to see today. So I really hope you enjoy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off today's Hoya tour in my bedroom, half because I feel like I've started all my other tours in my living room, but also because I've got a hell of a lot of Hoya condensed on this shelf unit right here, which these are from Ikea. There's two of them, and I have fixed into each little section an LED grow light strip, which I just got on Amazon.com, but I also have these listed on my Amazon affiliate store, which I will have linked below. But let's begin at the top left of the shelf unit and we'll work our way down. So this first one here is a Hoya croniana. I really enjoy the short spade shaped leaves that this one has. Next to that is this Hoya rotunda flora with these funky leaves that kind of look like they could be like Shrek's toenails. Really funky, but uh, a pretty slow grower. I've had this one for probably at least two years now. Hasn't really grown that much. In fact, it looks like it's got some of these dried vines right here that I'm gonna have to snip off soon. Speaking of slow growers, <laughs> Hoyas across the board are pretty slow growers, but the ones that I have on this shelf unit here have barely grown for me over the past couple years, so I should probably consider giving them a little bit more light. I don't think that these grow lights are cutting it for some of these Hoyas. Uh, this one right here is a Hoya David Comingii. And then there's also this Hoya Retusa right here with these pretty funky leaves. This is a rather common Hoya on the market as of a couple years ago. Then I also have this Hoya Globulosa right here. Super fuzzy leaves, really funky, rigid leaves. It's some fun venation. I really enjoy this one. Uh, this one is from Steve's Leaves, which of course I have to mention that from now until the end of March, and perhaps later on, uh, you can use code NICK15 to save 15% on any purchase you make from Steve'sLeaves.com, excluding any of their auction plants. But this Hoya Glo Globulosa, I'm pretty sure, is one that they would just have regularly available on their website. And then there is this Seropegia linearis. So Seropegia is not a Hoya, of course, but I'm gonna talk about some of Hoya's relatives today. Uh, so Seropegia, the common version of this house plant is called string of hearts, but this is more of a string of needles. Uh, this one goes all the way down to the floor and practically works its way back up. But I have to at least mention this house plant today since it is very closely related to Hoya's and I probably will not be doing a Seropegia a collection video because I just don't have that many. And then in the back there is one of my favorite Hoyas. So that is Hoya Iris Marie. I got that one a couple years ago as just one single vine from logies.com and I have propagated it consistently into a nice full plant right here. That's probably at least six different vines. I have another one propagating currently, so I'm just constantly working on filling out this Hoya. I really enjoy it. The stems are a little bit more, uh, how do I describe it? They hold themselves up more. They're a little bit more woody as well, but it doesn't grow in that similar vining ma manner that a lot of Hoyas grow in. It kind of just will hold itself up a little bit more aggressively, as you can kind of see with my specimen here. I know it's kind of tucked in the back there, but I should really consider bringing it forward because I really am very obsessed with that Hoya. Definitely in my top five. Uh, this is a Hoya Pachycleta, definitely a new Hoya for me, but I know that this is one that's been really popping up a lot on the market as of late. Hasn't really done much for me. I don't know if this leaf is new or not, but it looks like we're just about to get some new growth going right there. Uh, and then I have this Hoya Linearis. I got this one as a couple of cuttings from a friend. Actually, I think two separate friends gave me some cuttings and I've just combined them over uh, time. But this one's not doing too hot for me right now. It's always had an issue with mealybug, but right now it looks like it's really there. Some of these leaves are turning yellow, so I should probably consider uh, doing something with this, maybe propagating it via like the butterfly method, if you guys have ever 
uh, heard of that. I'm not a reputable source to talk about that. So I would Google propagating your Hoyas or Seropegias with the butterfly method if you are curious as to what I'm talking about. But really considering giving it a go with this one, perhaps maybe I'll have to share my experience. We're working our way over, I have this Hoya Ban Nong Noi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. Of course, I'll put the name on screen, but you can also see it on the tag there. Uh, this one grow, grew quite a great deal for me at first with this long uh, vine here and even flowered for me at one point, but it has really taken a step back. Oh, wait, actually I'm saying that and now I realize right here, I don't know if we're gonna be able to focus. Give me one second. So right here, you can see that there is some new growth emerging, that purple bit, as well as that little cluster right there. So that is a cluster of flowers that's getting ready to bloom. Hopefully it stays. Sometimes Hoyas will start to produce a peduncle with a bloom on it, and then sometimes the blooms do not last. However, I have had this one bloom for me once before, so I'm very hopeful, but that, that's a pretty cool discovery. If uh, we didn't find anything today, at least we found this. So I'm interested to see where that goes. Working our way over, this is actually not a Hoya, this is a begonia, even though it looks a lot like a Hoya. Uh, there is a Hoya pubicalix back here, I think it's like the splash version. I have just really not paid this plant too much mind, this is totally my fault. I should be watering it more often, it's just, you know, see, got this dead leaf here, let's get rid of that. Uh, so it's barely grown for me, but that is 100% my fault. But we do have some like tendrilling going on up top, but you know, this. This one just really deserves some more attention from me. I, it's such a beautiful house plant. This is totally my fault. I'm gonna take the blame on that one. Uh, and then I have this Hoya Multiflora in the back corner here. Also a very different Hoya uh, in the way that it grows very much more upright and the leaves are way thinner in comparison to uh, the other Hoyas that I'm talking about today. And you can see that this one is in bloom. It's just got a couple of flowers on this little cluster here. Uh, but you can see that it has these four, I believe, flowers that look reminiscent of shooting stars, as this is called commonly the shooting stars Hoya. So I don't think I really have any more Hoyas in bloom that I'm aware of, so I at least want to take a moment to point this out today. But I'm excited to see that that um, Ban Nong Noi is also getting ready to bloom. Hopefully those blooms last. If we move down, I have this Hoya Elagiorum. This one has lost a couple leaves over the last year. Only has these three left. Very slow grower. Probably should give it a little bit more light. I think that I should find out a little bit of a situation uh, differently for my Hoyas, which is perhaps something I could work on in the next couple months. Uh, seeing as I just think that at this point, the grow lights on this shelf are just too far away. As you'll see, I have another Hoya shelf in my home later on in this video there, where I think they're growing much better. Uh, this is a Hoya pubicalix right here. This is, I'm pretty sure, the first Hoya that I ever got. They were cuttings uh, from somebody that I was trading houseplants with. I had no idea what it was, and like I said, pretty sure it was my first Hoya. And it's exploded ever since, considering it was just two leaves at first. It's now a whole lot going on. I can see there's a little bit of mealybug on these stems right here. If you see those little white fuzzy bits, I'm not going to be able to zoom in much more. Uh, and you can see it's kind of leaving a residue because there's enough of them that it's kind of sticky if you can see it in the light. So I should really, after I'm done uh, filming this video, I should go and clean this off with some insecticidal soap or maybe a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel or I could spray it with a, a solution of like rubbing alcohol and water and soap. There's plenty of different ways. I have different videos on how to take care of uh, plant pests, but mealybug and Hoya kind of go hand in hand. It's just definitely something you have to uh, really keep on top of, but regardless, you can see this house plant's been, oh, there's definitely some real fuzzy ones hiding back here, as you can see. Let's just go ahead and ugh, just get rid of those. But uh, there's a lot of new growth on this, this tendril here, which really could use a good clean. There's a tendril back there, uh, and probably one or two more that are hiding amongst the rest. This is also a new one for me from Steve's Leaves. This is Hoya Breviolata. Uh, here's some new growth right here. One little yellowing leaf here that we'll just remove, but besides that, the plant looks good and is settling into my space. I'm surprised to have some new growth on it, to be honest, as you can probably get the gist that me and my Hoyas uh, take a long time to get to know each other. They really do seem to take their time acclimating to my space and to get going, but if I get new growth within the first year, honestly, I am thrilled. And let's work our way down to this last shelf. I don't think there's very much going on down here. In fact, this is usually my kind of rescue shelf situation. 
as you can probably kind of see, but uh, one that's also on a rescue mission right now is this Hoya coronaria. It was just this vine that I let dry out too much. I put it in a really obscure space and I messed up. But now we have some new growth. I have this leaf right here and you can see this new vine that's forming. So at least we got something definitely worth holding on to. And then this Hoya merillii, which also has just been this one leaf for a really long time, but there is some little bits of green you can see inside the base of the pot there which hopefully in the next few months, hopefully during the growing season, will grow into some nice robust vines. So I think that's it for the shelf system here, but let's just get on up and move over a little bit more. I got some more to share with you guys in my bedroom before we move out to my living room. So on this shelf area right here, I have this Hoya. You know what, I don't really know what this is. So this one I got from Costa Farms and it was the one that was labeled as Hoya like DS70 by Lobata or something, but I think people say it's like Hoya Affinity to Bertonier, uh, which I have another one of those right here actually, which gets a little bit more sun stress to it. As you can see, this one is growing a little bit more, a little bit better for me. So just so you can see, uh, but I don't know if this is the same kind. I'm not sure if this is from the Costa Farms collection or not. So just wanna point that out. And while we're over here, I should show you my Hoya Macrophylla. This one I have on like a little teepee here. It's got some new growth coming in. You can see a new leaf right there as they start off really tiny and then they grow into these giant super thick leaves with gorgeous variegation to them. Uh, and there's quite a few leaves on this one that it kind of meanders all about, but I have another one of these that you'll see later on as well. If I really like a Hoya, I end up getting two of them, sometimes three of them. And then this one was sold to me as this Hoya Motoskii, which I think is like a variant or cultivar of Hoya carnosa, so nothing you know too wild, but this doesn't necessarily look like the Motoski eyes that I'm used to seeing. I'm not sure if this one maybe was mistakenly uh, given to me or mistakenly labeled, uh, but you can see this has a little bit of growth coming right there, which you probably are noticing that this one is on my wall and growing in a little bit of a different manner. So I do like to grow my Hoyas on mounts, which this is uh, the roots are encased in sphagnum moss, which I've then covered in some decorative green moss, and I've just wrapped it around this little piece of bark here. I do have videos on mounting plants. I'm pretty sure I've done Hoyas in at least one of them, uh, just so you can get an idea of how to do it. But I think this is a fantastic way to save on space, as I really do just have this Hoya starting to really flourish here, and it's just not taking up any surface area at all. And I do have a couple more actually. So this one, oh my God, don't, don't make fun of me. This one really is kind of not looking too hot lately. So this is uh, what was sold to me as the Scidia imbricata. So uh, just like I said earlier, there was a Saropegia linearis and Saropegia are very closely related to Hoya. The Scidia are also very closely related to Hoya, which I did, I do think my first video of the collection series was on the Scidia, but how could I not mention them when I'm just going around doing my Hoya tour? Uh, this one, oh my god, I just dropped this one recently, so I feel like a couple of the leaves just kind of browned, as you can see, but I think it's recovering totally fine. It was a pretty gnarly fall. Uh, this is my Discidia pneumolariotes, or Discidia pneumolaria variegata. I do have to apologize for the sunlight. Obviously, it's going to be blowing out our visibility at least a little bit here. Uh, I was really struggling with this house plant, and I just put it in some, took some cuttings of it and put it in moss on this mount here, and it took very well. Of course, like I said, I really did. I had a really gnarly fall a couple uh, days ago or like a week ago when I was watering it. So a couple of those leaves did die off. Uh, and then this Hoya methide. I don't know how to pronounce this plant, but it's what it is. Uh, and also another Discidia right here, Discidia russifolia, probably one of the most common Discidias out there. And one more while we're at it, I have this Discidia ovada which is starting to put off some new growth, as you can see with this fun little vine that's coming off. This is definitely like the saddest of all my mounts, but one day it might look very happy and that's why I hold on to it. No worth in getting rid of it. And we got a couple more Discidias over here. So this is where I keep my Discidia uh, Jerry, very full. I think it's still in its plastic planter. I should consider repotting it in the springtime. Also this Discidia, uh, this is sold to me as Oeantha variegata. I don't know if that's correct. That's just what it is on the market. 
very very full planter i really enjoy this whole planter setup that it's in i know it's a little difficult to see but it was sold to me this way which i don't normally see house bents sold in this kind of apparatus here which is pretty neat and this one has barely done anything for me since i got it so this is a hoya cow yai pretty sure don't know if you're gonna be able to see these leaves very well at all but they have some pretty big leaves green with some nice veination to them this is definitely the one you're gonna have the hardest time seeing, but I wish it would do something because I really, really enjoy this leaf structure. Pretty fantastic. And last but not least, I'm pretty sure at least, we have this Hoya Callistophylla, which also has done absolutely nothing for me. But I've heard this is a pretty slow growing Hoya, so maybe one day, once it gets going, it will really give me some nice vines, but also has some pretty stunning foliage. As you can see that it would be quite nice if this thing would get growing for me, but I'm being patient. And while we work our way out to the living room, I might as well just show you, I do have one more of the, those Serapigia linearis growing on my shelf here, just kind of hanging down. I really like the way that these leaves just look against the white wall there. Pretty fantastic. So let's work our way out to the living room. So looks pretty much exactly the same. We have Muffin here who just threw up on my bed right before I started filming. So hopefully she's feeling okay, but I think she's feeling fine because she looks very happy. Okay, so where do we start? So in the kitchen, I do have one Hoya. There's this little Hoya gracilis that we potted up in my how to repot a Hoya video that we did a couple months ago, which I don't think has grown a single leaf, but that kind of checks out. So I don't think there's any more in this area. I think the closest one is going to be on this shelf unit here. Hello, everybody. So what do we have? Oh, this is really one of my favorites. Just their plain old Hoya Carnosa. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Although when I worked at the houseplant store, if people asked me if I had Hoya in stock and I just showed them that I had this, they were never, not once thrilled, but like, a nice plain green Hoya Carnosa with those little bit of speckles. There's nothing better. Uh, I also have this Serapigia, um, what do they call this? The Silver Cloud. I just moved this here recently. So I had it growing closer to light, but it's been growing really well. So I would like to try it out in a little bit of a lower light situation. But I'm admittedly surprised. When this plant first started growing, it was giving me some of that revertedness. Sorry, it's not focusing. Uh, you can see on some of those old leaves, it does look like a very uh, messed up, mutated, uh, plain Serapegia woody eye. Uh, but then it really did start getting really robust with that silver uh, foliage. So it's looking fantastic. And I'm trying it out in lower light and we'll see how it goes. Cross my fingers. And another Serapegia linearis. I really like these and they've just really been like hitting the market by storm the past couple of years. So when I stumble upon a cute one for just a couple dollars, sometimes I can't help myself. Also one of my oldest Hoyas, which really has been kind of dying back for me a little bit, I will say, is this Hoya Wayetii. It's kind of hiding behind my sissus here. But yeah, a couple leaves have turned yellow and fallen off over the last year. And I don't think I've gotten a new tendril in at least a year so. Hopefully uh, it figures something out, but I don't know what's going on with this guy. Even this leaf right here is looking a little funky. I'm having a really hard time keeping this camera in focus today, but you can see. Uh, I think it might be almost time to either consider getting a new Hoya Wayetii or really troubleshooting this guy. But sometimes with Hoyas, they just start dying on you and it seems like there's no reason why, but they just have a mind of their own sometimes. So I will respect that. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong though. <laughs> Probably not watering it enough. So I have the beginning of a Hoya pubicalix right here, which is kind of hiding behind uh, this syndapsis up here. If I can just move it a little bit, but very, very full Hoya pubicalix. This is the Royal Hawaiian purple variety, but no matter how full it is, this one still has not bloomed for me. And it really just goes to show that it doesn't matter how uh, big and luscious your Hoyas are. Sometimes they really just seem to have a mind of their own in our homes uh, when it comes to blooming. But this one's putting off a lot of new growth. There's some, you know, you can see some new growth popping out right here. There's a new leaves with this new tendril and stuff right here. So at least it's grown for me. Can't complain about that. Uh, I do have one more Hoya pubicalix. This one I always forget about. This is the pink silver variety or silver pink. 
I don't know exactly, but it, it looks just like the other ones. There's no point of focusing on that one. And then I have another uh, Hoya Macrophylla uh, Alba Marginata, or the variegated version. Some people have been saying this is actually Latifolia. Oops, sorry, I got a little blown out. Uh, I have not done enough research on that, but I do just want to uh, make a note of that. Uh, which this one has been getting some really nice pink coloration uh, thanks to my Soltec Solutions Aspect Light, which is ever so lovingly adorning my living room and this uh, plant corner that I have going on here, which as always you can use code NICK2022 to save 15% on any grow light from SoltecSolutions.com. Link in the description. And do I have any Hoyas over here? Actually, I do not have any Hoyas over here on this trellis, but I do have this Discidia. Okimanata, which is once again not focusing. Oh, there we go, which is just kind of out there, Discidia. I really like the foliage. It's got a similar look to uh, like Hoya Wayetii. Uh, this was only a couple leaves when my friend gave me a piece of it, and now it's kind of, you know, really filled itself out to this nice full house plant here, and I really like it. Definitely one of the more like botanical garden varieties, species that I grow in my home. Might not look like anything special, but it does mean a whole lot to me. And before, oh, and you know what, I'm going to forget about them, so I might as well show you this window as much as I want to move our way down first. I have this Seropegia uh, variegata, woody eye variegata, Seropegia linearis subspecies woody eye variegata for being super specific, but that is just a total mouthful. Uh, this thing goes down pretty far. So you can see most of it's variegated. Some of it uh, has reverted to the plain green variety. And I have another Discidia. Ovada. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm showing you the Serapegias and Discidias as well in this video, but it just kind of makes sense, I feel like. This one is about to bloom. There is a cluster. Oh, you are not going to be able to see that with this lighting right here. You have a great view of outside. Great view. Well, womp. no, but there's a flower cluster right here. It's not in bloom, so there's really nothing to see. And, oh my gosh, I need to pick a better time of day to film these videos. I know you guys are always like, don't complain about the lighting, it's fine, but it's not fine. Uh, this is my Hoya Curtisii. Ooh, it's really getting some long legs. You can kind of see in the silhouette here, because that's really all you're gonna get, uh, how much this plant has grown for me when I first got it like six months ago. It was just inside the pot here, which is very full, hopefully. Yes? No? No, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, oh, oh. No. Okay, so it's a very, very full planter of Hoya Curtisii. I'm really, really moving the bed right now. And what else do we got? Okay, so if we work our way down to the window, which I would love to get out of this window because it's not doing us any favors at the moment, I have my Hoya Carii, my heart leaf Hoya, sweetheart Hoya, whatever you want to call it. Very, very slow growing Hoya but a very reliable one, I will say at least that. And then in this corner here is one of my ro most robust Hoyas. It is my Hoya Australis, which I have on two bamboo hoops that have kind of uh, intertwined with each other and the plant is working its way all around. In fact, it gets a little too uh, curious, these vines, because they will grab onto anything. In my old apartment, it grabbed onto like a little jute, uh, wrap that I had hanging a bottle up and I was really nervous it was going to pull it out of the ceiling. So here I'm kind of nipping any problems like that in the bud by just having it on this little trellis doodad here and I think it looks freaking fantastic. It literally looks like a showpiece but unfortunately I can only really fit it <laughs> in the back corner there so I barely can even appreciate it. And there is this Hoya Lacunosa Looks very similar to that Hoya Croniana I showed you very first, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they are very close relatives, so that makes sense. Okay, so this is the Hoya shelf I kind of mentioned before. This is a little bit newer, a little bit more new. I don't know the grammar, uh, in my home. Uh, so you can see these, in my opinion, are growing a little bit better than the ones on the shelves in my bedroom, as this shelf thing is only like 11 inches versus the one in my bedroom is like 16 inches as far as like the length between the height, I don't know the words, uh, between the shelves and the grow light. So in this unit right here, I have a whole lot of Hoya as well. Uh, the one over there is another Hoya gracilis, that one right there. And then the one right next to it is the Hoya, they call this the Hindu rope Hoya, let's get this. 
epiphyllum out of the way. So this is the Hoya carnosa compacta. Then I have this Hoya comingiana, which was giving me just like a long leafless tendril. So I cut it off and now it's putting off this tendril with leaves. So that's very exciting. Also another Hoya, I'm sorry, Dyscidia, Dyscidia ovata back there which is giving me a lot of new growth, which that one did not give me any new growth for like a freaking year when I first got it, so I'm happy about that. Uh, speaking of no new growth, there is my Hoya Sunrise back there, which that one, I had it in a window at some point and I got that beautiful red coloration, but then it burned a little bit. Oops, it burned a little bit. As you can see, that big scar. Now it's really just doing nothing, so we're just, we're just waiting on that one. Hoya Numelarioides, also just kind of waiting on that one. It's been a very slow grow for me, but hopefully it gets going soon. This is a, oh goodness, I'm so sorry. There's obviously a lot of plant material in my home. This is a Hoya Crinkles Tinkles, which has the most adorable name, but also pretty slow growing. Uh, I think this has like Carnosa as one of the parents, but I can't remember exactly what uh, both of them are, but I'm pretty sure Carnosa is one of the parents. Moving down, I have this Hoya Crassipes. I'm not sure if that's the true name for this plant I'm, or what but that's what i purchased it as then back there you're barely gonna be able to see and i am on the floor right now so i'm having a hard time getting a really good angle at this let's try this uh there is a hoya chelsea which you can kind of see in the top that little notch right there has a little bit of new growth so i'm gonna stay in focus uh, and i have that literally still growing inside leca pebbles little clay pebbles uh inside a yogurt container which is a totally fine way to grow your hoya but sooner than later, if I want to get in the soil, I really should consider getting in the soil because that thing has been in there for at least a year now. This is just some cuttings that I took of my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, no, Crimson Princess, uh, because it was riddled in mealybug and I didn't want to get rid of it completely, so I was able to salvage a few cuttings, which have taken, uh, although that sphagnum moss is bone dry, so I should at least give it a drink pretty soon. And I think that's all of them for this area right here, but we got a couple more to share with you. It does not end now, don't you worry. Over in this window, which is the middle window here in my living room, I have my Hoya Abavada, which is just starting to give me much new growth. And we got Muffin coming in to say hello, make her presence known. Um, these two new, uh, leaves right here, for example, are brand new as well as that one right here that's poking out on top of it. So I'm really excited. This has not really done that much for me since I brought it home. A little bit of growth here and there, but now it seems like it's just starting to get chugging along. Uh, I also have, which doesn't look that great, sorry, this thematophyllum right here is really getting in my way, not to mention my couch is right here, so kind of squished. I have this Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. I'm pretty sure I got that one right. Hoya Obscura on that beautiful venation and red coloration that it gets from the sun stress. This is another Hoya Van Nong Noi, according to the tag. It looks a little bit different than the other one I have though. Up in this window, I have, oh, we're gonna be playing this game again. So this is a Hoya Wiedii Varagada. I don't know if this is Hoya Kentiana variegata or Hoya Wiedii variegata, but I just kind of assume they're Wiedii. Speaking of which, I totally forgot about this one right here, which is, once again, either a Hoya Wiedii or uh, Kentiana. But the really cool thing about this, though, you can see it got sun stressed and it's got like this purple uh, tinge to the, the outside of the leaves, but then randomly this new growth is coming in like completely gothic purple. Like, do you see that? And it's been like that for a while. In fact, like this leaf right here, that little tiny one has been there for, and I don't think that one actually might be new, but the one next to it that has a little bit of uh, white like damage on it, uh, that is pretty purple as well and has been there for a while. So I'm interested to see how long this purple coloration lasts for as it's been on there for at least a few months now. Pretty cool. Um, I have a Hoya fungi back there, but this thing has been riddled in scale. I'm not gonna really bother getting back there because it's just, it's riddled in scale. It looks terrible. It's, it's a house plant. I should just get a new one if I genuinely would like to grow it. I have another Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, 
right here. Got a little yellow leaf. This one hasn't been the most um, outstanding grower for me, but it's doing fine. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then there is this Hoya Crinkle 8, Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8, putting off a lot of new growth for me as well. You can see these ones that are all nice and buttery are the brand new growth for me. Underneath that, there is another Hoya Rutusa. Oh my gosh, you can start to see my, my mess that I gotta clean up. Uh, that one hasn't been growing very well for me. And I think, are we at the very last one? This is a pretty uh, anticlimactic one to end on, but I have this Hoya Shepardii right here. It looks very similar to Hoya Weadii with these super long leaves, super dark beans. I think they call this the string bean Hoya, which that name is very fitting and makes a lot of sense. Thank you all so much for joining me today on my Hoya tour. There is obviously a lot to see, but I really love collecting Hoya because as you probably noticed, they're just, in most cases, very small. When you purchase a Hoya, it's just a tiny, tiny little plant and it usually takes a couple years to get going. So uh, it's just the perfect plant to, to have 50 of. I can't think of any other plant I'd rather have this many of. So <laughs> thank you guys again for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.